can't climb on it, it's a new car. So before we get into this week's video, I should probably give you some context. Goat now have a horse racing team, who doesn't these days, and we'll be competing in the racing league starting this very July. If only we'd been daily vlogging, we could, I don't know, cut right now to the start of the whole journey a year ago. We're here at the launch of Racing League, a new Sky Sports backed horse racing league. We're one of 12 teams. The GOAT racing team is one of 12 teams that will be competing. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a full plan of how we're going to activate it, how we're going to make this the greatest horse racing team of all time. If you're watching this and you don't really know a lot about horse racing, horse racing team events are not really a thing. This is the first time it will ever really be a thing and we're going to be one of the first 12 teams to make it something. Early. Today I'm at Newmarket, the horse capital of the universe. Okay, let's go, please. That's goat racing trainer George Scott, the man I've come to shadow as he prepares his fleet of four-legged creatures for a summer of racing. This is unfamiliar territory. Hello. Ah. All I do know is that the racing league is redefining the sport of horse racing. Six weeks, 12 teams, 36 races, and over two million pounds in prize money up for grabs. Oh, and one cameraman completely out of his depth. There's a horse going to the races there. He's on to the races. Morning, how are you? Good, Safe trip. We have runners most days, especially this time of year, but the horses run, you know, they run anything between once every fortnight and once every six to eight weeks. How many people have you got here working? Uh, there's about 20. And what do the jobs range from? They range from trainer to assistant, head lad, second head lad, and then just standard lad. We're talking like Magaluf lad? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the staff are called lads. Before I had time to figure out what kind of lad I was, we were setting off on our way to... I wasn't really sure, to be honest. I was still half asleep. Let's see where they are. All the staff get in about 5.45. There's three sets of horses that come out, so this is the first set. And uh, yeah, we get, get on with it before the rest of the country wakes up. And here they are here, the horses. So we've caught up with them, meandering their way through town. There's a couple of these that will probably end up in the racing leagues, so the Charlie Fellows in particular. And then there's a few of these, these are babies, a few of these they've never raced before. One, two, three, four. Are they going to stop at the shop for a snack? <laughs> Not this time. Having meandered their way to the bucolic training fields, it's time to gallop, trot, and canter. Those are horse terms. Hi George. Hi Bill. If you lead um, that filly then, and then is she the best lead for you? Yeah. Yeah, just you lead her, just a nice sensible canter. This is Charlie. Charlie, this is Matthew from Goat, doing our first morning of filming. They're just coming up now, these six. Impressed with what you see? Yeah, pleased. Yeah, I mean, not looking to be impressed in the day-to-day -day training. This is only routine, routine work. You're going to get wet feet, but can't really do much about it. What are you looking for? I guess you're looking at action, just the way they kind of, they're moving. This is quite a stiff canter, so it's quite hard for them. So I'm listening more than anything. Listening to hear if their breathing's clear and if they take a Take a big breath. If a horse has got a, a, like a, a small infection, you'll be able to hear a change in their in their wind, we call it. You talk about getting up in the early, getting up early in the morning and stuff. I, I every single day, you know, six days a week, and like you do get used to it. But you know, at the same time, you know, I'm, I, you know you're, I think you're pretty much constantly tired. We try and get home and have a little sleep in the afternoon as well. Just 20 minutes, just to freshen up. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. So, so these are done now, they're going, they're going home. It'll take about half an hour to walk home quietly. Can I feed him an apple? Yeah. Can I actually? Do you have one? No. <laughs> I'll get a carrot. <gasps> it's your lucky day, mate. What's, it, what's his name? He's not named, he hasn't got a name yet. Can I, oh, go on. You can put a name in the hat. Crunch bucket. There you go. Go on, crunch bucket. Oh. Now your breath is minty fresh. Are you excited by the prospect of the racing league? What's it bringing to horse racing that hasn't been there before? Yeah, no, very, very excited. Honestly, really excited. It's a new concept that offers the opportunity for racing to, to get to a wider audience. The prize money is, is fantastic. The way that it's been set up, 
means that it should be very competitive racing, you know, 0 to 90 handicaps. They'll be tightly condensed. You know, there won't be much in, you know, much in the horses and the races. It will be a really good product to, to bet on, be very competitive. It's, it's drawn in some of the biggest names in, in, the, in the game, so it's been well supported. So overall, yeah, really excited to see how it pans out. What are uh, goat racing's chances here? Have we got good horses? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, myself, Hugo Palmer, Charlie Fellows and Tom Clover, four, four sort of younger trainers. It's going to be really interesting to see how it pans out. I'm not sure necessarily that the Galactico trainers will have such a stranglehold on it because of the, the class of race. I think any horse in the, each of the races will have, a, will have a live chance of winning because it is a restricted handicap, 0-90. And most trainers have horses that can be competitive in that, in that grade. I think every team goes in with a live chance. And also, you know, you're going to want a progressive horse that's effectively his career traveling through this grade and he's going to end up higher. So it just really depends who's got horses that are improving at, at the right times to kind of travel through the racing league and onto bigger and better things. So yeah. every team's got a chance and we've certainly, we've certainly got the horses that should be competitive in, all the, in, in the races. Well, that was a learning curve and it's only 8.45. For more horsey action, tune in to the next vlog where I bother Charlie Fellows at his majestic yard and get a bit overconfident with my new animal friends. Oh, that is... Excuse me. Thanks for watching.